All programming languages suck, so I made my own. This is Chrono. It's a general purpose programming language made for modern programming. What do I mean by that? Well, all the new languages want to be the next C, C++, or even Python for some reason. And most of them want to take their place in the industry. But the sad thing is, it probably won't happen. Or that soon at least. Because the first generation of languages, while being old, they keep evolving to today's standards and most of them suck anyway besides Zig. Zig is the best thing that's ever happened to me in a while matter of fact we'll be using it today as i teach you how to make your own programming language from scratch step zero pick the language of your choice something low level is recommended step one make some syntax let's start with something like let x equal 10 semicolon step 2 make a lexer you might be asking what's a lexer well a lexer or tokenizer is the first step of a compiler in which you convert text in this case your code into meaningful tokens those tokens are categorized by numbers identifiers keywords special characters and so on Here's an example of these categories. The token struct contains the token type and lexeme. Lexeme. I don't know how to say it. Notice that the token type is a tagged union. If you don't know what a tagged union is, it's pretty much a union and an enum combined. These are not only safer by default, they are also helpful and more flexible. Also, notice that there are subcategories for some elements that are helpful and more readable. The lexer uses those categories to define a token, storing its lex and token type. To follow along, I recommend you taking a look at the repository, the link will be in the description. At first you might be a little confused, but I'll try my best to explain it all. The lexer structure has two main fields, input and position. The other two are not that necessary and I'll explain it later. The main function is the next function. It will go for the next token each time it's called. First, it will skip over irrelevant tokens like spaces, carriage returns and tabs. Then, it will fetch for the current token using the pick function. If the current position is greater than the input length, it will return an old and signal uh, end of file token. After that, it will begin doing checks like if it's a word, a keyword, a number, a comment, operator, symbol, and so on. Then, we'll wrap around the function and make it fetch for the next token until it finds end of file. Functions like pip, advance, skip extra, and many others are helper functions. They're often a small reusable piece of code that you can use to make your code more readable. Step 3. Make a parser. This is probably the longest and most annoying part of making a language, because it's the part where you make sense of the tokens you created. What I mean by that is that now you have to make the order in which you type the tokens make sense, aka syntax. And the other reason that is the most annoying part is that you have to predict how the user will type in your language. So, if the syntax for your language is complex, for the sake of uniqueness, you just got yourself fucked. It can't be too limited to the point it's boring to write in it, but it also can be much complex and free to the point the peak of your compiler is parsing a 5 line statement in a 1 liner operation. It's serious. Don't do it. Okay. So the parser struct has 3 main fields, which are tokens, index, and current token. The main function is the parse tokens function. That goes for the list of tokens and parses them into AST nodes. This is the part where I explain what is an abstract syntax tree. 
An AST is a data structure that represents the structure of a program or a code snippet. It basically turns our code into a tree. That tree has nodes and those nodes can contain other nodes and those nodes can contain other nodes and so on. It makes more sense the more you use it. It's basically just pointers. Yeah. AST is also a struct that contains a kind and data fields. In code, AST is just an array list that contains nodes that point to other AST nodes. Back to the parser. To make your life way easier, it's important to have as many helper functions as necessary because that's some long code you'll write. For example, Let's look at variable declaration. First checks if it's mutable or not based on the keyword, stores the identifier, checks for the operator, turns the expression into an AST and stores all that information to an AST node, including the expression and appends that node to a list. And that process goes for all AST types. Step 4. Make an analyzer. An analyzer or syntax analysis is the step of the parser where it checks for types and scope. If the type defined matches the expression type and if a variable or a function exists in a certain scope. It's often a quick step since it does basic checks. Step 5. Code generation. This is often a love and hate step where it's the part where you see your syntax get transformed into actual machine code into an actual program. It's also the step where it's the most work. Here you have some options for backend. You got LLVM, the most recommended choice and it's the one that I use. Quick backend, bytecode or even custom and I'll explain it later. I use the LLVM C API for my backend first because LLVM has all the tools you need to turn your code into an executable. Here I transverse the AST and use the LLVM C API functions accordingly. Here is an example of creating a variable with it and we got ourselves a compiler for a programming language. So far it's been my favorite project. I've been doing it for 6 months now, and the future of Chrono is still being decided. It's open source, but right now it's more of a me project. I made it because I was tired of C Sharp being so dependent on .NET and the garbage tooling outside of Windows. And I wanted a language just like it, just without all the nonsense. And no, I didn't know about the D language. Next video, maybe. And one thing led to another and here we are. Now it's more of a Zig inspired language, but I want to try having Ray as a memory model. It's too early to decide anything like that, but that's what I got. And right now I'm rewriting the code generator to make a custom backend for Chrono. I found out that the C API of LLVM is actually pretty limited when it comes to a broader range of things that the full API that is written in C++ has and there's no wrapper or even a proper ABI approach to make one. So if you're going to make a language, I really recommend making it in C or C++ if you're going for LLVM of course. If not, feel free to choose whatever you want. That's pretty much it, I hope you liked the video, leave a like and subscribe and see you next time.